Welcome back to Make Stuff Nation. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make an improved naturally aspirated propane forge or foundry burner. As with my previous design, you don't need a welder or any special equipment to make this burner. After experimenting with my previous burner, I've come up with a few simple modifications that allow you to adjust the airflow and also help sustain the flame better than the previous version. For supplies, you're gonna need the following items. One and a quarter inch iron pipe coupler, three quarter inch to one and a quarter inch bushing, nine inch, three quarter inch pipe nipple, one and a half inch to three quarter inch pipe reducer, one MIG tip, the smaller the diameter the better, this is 0 0.23 inches, two 1 8 inch brass pipe caps, two 3 inch sections of 1 8 inch brass pipe nipple, one 1 8 inch brass pipe T, one 2 or 3 inch section of lamp pipe or lamp nipple, it's 1 8 inch in diameter, one 1 quarter inch to 1 8 inch bushing, a quarter inch ball valve, and depending on your regulator connector type, you'll need a 1 quarter inch hose barb and hose clamp, or a piece of 1 quarter inch nipple and a 1 quarter inch to 3 8 inch bushing. Also you'll need a pressure regulator. This is a 0 to 40 psi regulator I picked up at my local hardware store, and it has a 3 8 inch pipe connection on the end. Finally you'll need a piece of scrap metal, that we're gonna to use to make the airflow adjuster. We don't need too many tools for this project. First, we'll need a couple of wrenches. An adjustable wrench, an 11 16 inch wrench, a 9 16 inch wrench, a half inch wrench, one eighth inch NPT tap, a 21 64 inch drill bit, a M6 tap, a five millimeter drill bit, and a drill. Not absolutely necessary, but helpful is a hacksaw, center punch, to mark out holes and to file to knock off any sharp edges or burrs. I've put a parts and tools list down in the description with links on where you can acquire each of the items. We'll start by assembling the body of the burner. Just put the nine inch piece of pipe somewhere sturdy and thread on the three quarter inch to one and a quarter inch bushing. Just thread it on hand tight and then thread on the one and a quarter inch pipe coupler. Then we'll turn it around and add on the other end. Screw on the one and a half inch to three quarter inch reducer. I'm recycling this one from an old burner so it already has some holes drilled in it. That takes care of the main body of the burner. The next part of the process is modifying this T to hold the MIG tip. You're going to want to clamp it in a vise. If you don't have a vise, you can use some other clamp and just clamp it down to a workbench. Then take your file and we just want to grind a little flat spot here to make starting the drill bit a little easier. Now that we have a flat spot to work with, you can either use a spring center punch or a normal punch and a hammer to mark a hole in the center of the flat spot. You want it to be exactly opposite of the leg of the T. Mark it a second time for good measure. We can go ahead and drill the hole. We want to make sure we keep it nice and parallel with the opposite side of the T. Now we can tap the hole we just drilled by putting the M6 tap in the drill and running it through. And we can test the fit of the MIG tip. That threads in nicely, nice and snug. Oh, well that turned out crooked. Guess I'll have to make another one. Luckily I have an extra T fitting. Make sure we're nice and straight this time. That should do the trick. Threads fit well. Let's see how well lined up we are this time. That's much better. For the next part of the assembly, we'll thread in the piece of lamp pipe into the back of the T. You can use a wrench to tighten it up. The next step is to drill a hole straight through the one and a half inch reducer. You can use a 13 30 seconds drill bit to do this. Since I'm recycling one from an old burner, it's already done. To work on assembling the rest of the burner, I'm going to take one of the one eighth inch pipe nipples and add the one quarter to one eighth inch bushing on the end. I'm going to then thread that into the ball valve. I'm going to take the remaining pipe nipple and thread an end cap on it. Take your T fitting, put it inside the reducer, and thread in one of your 1 8 inch nipples from one side. Then thread in the other nipple from the other side. 
Once you get them threaded in, you can tighten them up with a wrench. So that takes care of the main assembly of the burner. Now we can get started on the airflow regulator. Take your scrap piece of metal and either cut it into a square or a circle that's the same size as the one and a half inch reducer. There we go. We'll just take a file and knock off the sharp edges. There we go, nice and clean, no sharp edges. Next, mark the approximate center of your piece of metal. Then use your center punch to mark it. Now with it mounted securely, we can drill our hole with our 21 64th drill bit. And follow that up with tapping it with our 1 8 inch NPT tap. That looks pretty decent. Now we'll test fit it and see how it fits. That looks good. With that installed, we can install our end cap. Tighten it on with a wrench. Now obviously this assembly is still a little bit loose and we want to have it lined up directly down the barrel of the burner. We can apply some JB Quick Weld here on the outside and that will hold it in place. This part of the burner shouldn't get too hot because of the airflow through it will help keep it cool. So we shouldn't have to worry about the temperature. I'll tighten this down to align it while we apply the JB Quick Weld. I've cleaned up both sides with a wire brush, some sandpaper. I'm going to hit it with some brake clean before I apply the epoxy. It's a little messy, but it's really effective. There we go, that's the second side. Here we have the finished burner. The epoxy is all set up. The gas assembly is nice and secure. We have our adjustable airflow regulator. All we need to do is hook it up and give it a try. To hook up our pressure regulator and hose, I'm gonna have to use the barb and hose clamp. I initially thought this was a 3 8 inch NPT fitting, but it's not. It's actually a 3 8 inch flare fitting, so it's not compatible. I'd have to get a couple more adapters, but I already have the hose barb, so I'm just going to cut this off and use the hose barb instead. There, that's nice and snug. I'll just use some scissors to cut off the fitting I'm not using. Then slide the hose clamp over the hose and press it onto the hose barb. Finally, use a screwdriver to tighten the hose clamp. So here we are the next day. The epoxy is set up and fully cured. It's holding the assembly very nice and secure. It's not moving at all. And then the airflow adjuster spins nice and easily. Let's give it a test run. I've backed off the regulator as far as it'll go, so it should be at zero PSI. This is at the minimum pressure on the regulator. It's 
So that's with minimal airflow. So this is pretty high pressure. Got a nice flame. The body of the burner is staying nice and cool. I'm gonna shut off the burner by just turning down the regulator. Well, I would say that was a very successful test of this new burner. The smaller diameter MIG tip, as well as the larger diameter flare, helps sustain the flame down at the flare end of the burner where we want it. The smaller MIG tip should help the burner also be much more efficient. The airflow adjuster will give us much more versatility in the type and temperature of flame that we can use to heat our foundry or forge. As you can see, this is a very easy burner to make yourself. You don't need any special equipment like a welder. You can do it with mostly hand tools. I encourage you to go make one for yourself. Don't forget that I've posted a list of all the parts and some of the tools down in the description. If you have any questions or suggestions, please throw in the comments down below. As always, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks again for watching Make Stuff Nation. We'll see you next time.